Hi, Algebra 2. We're looking at day seven notes of the logs unit. So exponential applications. Why it says revisited is because we did this in the last unit. Now we're going to talk about how to solve each of these rather than graphically do it algebraically using logs. So the idea of like basic interest plus or minus, if it's increasing or decreasing, the number of times they're compounding using that n value. And then if it says compounded continuously or natural growth and decay, that's our PERT formula. Feel free to pause if you need to fill those in. I'm gonna jump right on in with the first example. So it says in 2015, the population of a city was 43,600. Suppose the population increased at a rate of 2% per year. Develop an equation that represents the population of the city, T years since 2015. Use the equation to determine what the populations of the city will be in 2020, ah, right now, and in 2025. Finally, use your equation to determine in what year the population is going to reach 60,000. So I'm going to break it up as parts A, B, and C. So for part A, you're asked for the equation. Because it says it's increasing at a rate of 2% per year, I'm going to use that first formula, this guy right here. So A equals P, 1 plus or minus R to the T power. Mm -hmm. The fact that it says that we are increasing means we're going to use that plus. We're starting with 43,000. That's your principal value or your initial value. Your 2%, that's your R. Right? Now, because it does say population, you can set it equal to population instead of equal to A, but I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to say equals A. So 43,600, 1 plus 0 0.02, and then raised to the T power. Now, something to keep in mind, that 43,000 is in the year um, 2015. So the T value here represents the number of years, right, since 2015, or number of years after 2015, however you want to think of it. All right, there's part A. What I'm going to call part B Use our equation to determine the population in these two years. So that really means we're going to find the population or the A value when T is equal to, well, 2020 means T is 5, and when T is equal to 10 in 2025, right? That's nothing more than some calculator work. <laughs> So for the first one, grab your calculator. Obviously, 1 plus 0 0.02 is just 1.02. You're going to plug in a 5. Second time around, you're going to plug in a 10. So I'll grab my calculator here. So we've got 43,600 times 1.02. Raise it to the fifth power. And now it's a population. Since we're talking number of people, round those values. So I would say 48,130, you know, eight people in the year 2020. All right, and then you can play the game again, plugging in 10. For time's sake, I'm just gonna write down my answer. It's 53,148 people, and that's in the year 2025. Mm -hmm. All right, part C, what I'm calling part C, use the equation to determine in what year the population reaches 60,000. So we want to find the T value, essentially, when the population equals 60,000. So I'm going to put 60,000 on the left-hand side, 43,600, and then 1.02 to the T value. Now, just using my common sense, 10 years after it started, the population was up to about 53,000. So it's got to be something bigger than 10 to get that population all the way up to 60,000 because the population is increasing here. With that being said, instead of going Y1, Y2, to do this algebraically, we're going to use logs. So I have to get this part of it, the 1.02 raised to the t power by itself, 
which means the first step is to actually divide out the 43,600. If it divides out pretty, go for it. If it doesn't, you need to keep it as exact as possible. So on your calculator, if we do 60,000 divided by 43,600, it's not the nicest thing. So maybe math frack it or at least keep it running so it's exact. So 150 over 109 and then equals 1.02 to the T power, All right? To use logs, you can do common log, natural log, or more likely since the base is 1.02, we're gonna do log base 1.02 of the left side and do log base 1.02 of the right hand side. All right, this piece will cancel out and you're just simply left with T. This part over here, this is going into your calculator. And that should come out as about 16 and change. And if you remember what the question says, it says in what year? So in what year is code for, all right, it starts in 2015. I'm adding on to that 16, you know, or so years. So in the year 2031 is when the population is going to reach 60,000, assuming that that growth stays steady. The equation to model this, if I'm starting with 30,000 as the value, that's my p-value, it depreciates at a rate of 15.5%. So I want to use this as my general formula. And then we're going to go minus because it's depreciating. All right, let's set it up. So A is equal to 30,000. One minus, change that to a decimal. So 0.155 raised to the T power. Now you can leave it like that. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna make it 30,000. And then you can type that right into your calculator, the one minus 0 0.155. It's gonna come out to be 0.845 raised to the T power. So it should make sense that it's decreasing in value because that's a number less than one. So that's a decreasing function right there. All right, here's the model that we're now gonna work with. Now we can answer the other questions. So part A says, according to our model, will the car ever have a value of zero? Well, that's a little tough. You could technically keep plugging in bigger and bigger numbers of T, but if you guys remember what you know about a decreasing function or exponential functions in general, decreasing is gonna look something like this, but does it ever technically hit zero? Nope, because there's something called a horizontal asymptote, right? So the answer here is no. Right, is because the model function or model equation has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, right? or in this case, a equals zero. So technically, no, it never equals zero. Part B. Part B says, okay, use that model again. When will the car's value be worth half of the original value? So half would be 15 grand in this case. So we want to set it equal to 15,000. On the left-hand side goes the 15,000. On the right, three, oops, 30,000, 0.845 raised to the T power. Mm -hmm. To be able to use logs, I have to get this piece all by itself. So you know what to do. Since it's 30,000 times this, divide 30,000 out. And without a calculator, you should immediately know like, hey, 15,000 was half of 30,000. That's going to give me one half or 0 0.5. Right? And then over here, I get point. 845 to the T all by itself, right? To get rid of this base of 0.845, I'm going to take log base 0.845 of both sides. So on the left, log base 0.845 of that one half, or feel free to write it as, you know, 0.5 there. I don't care. On the right, log base 0.845 of 0.845 
raised to the t power. Please show that you're taking the log of both sides. Right? You can't magically go from here to an answer and call it algebraic if the log is never shown in the process. Right? This part cancels. And now you can take this to the calculator. So that comes out as about 4.11 and it keeps going. So go back and reread the question. According to the model, when will the car's value be worth half of the original? So about four years after you purchase it. Um, so let's think about what we got. Starting with 20,000, that's your p-value. Wants to save 32,000. That's the A value. That's the amount that she wants to have for her grandson. 6% um, per year. That's your R value. Compounded quarterly. That means N equals four. Four times a year is how often they're compounding the money. All right. In how many years will it take? We are trying to solve for T. That is our goal here. All right. Let's plug everything in. 32,000 equals 20,000 times one plus 0 0.06 over four raised to the four times T. Let's get moving. We're gonna take that 20,000, divide it right out of there. Feel free to divide it right on the calculator. It actually comes out nice and neatly. You get 1.6. Over here, clean this up. So if I take, one plus 0.06 over four. That's going to give me 1.015. That's going to be a lot easier to write here. So I'm going to make this 1.015 raised to the 4t power. This is the base that I want to use here. So log base 1.015 of 1.6 and log base 1.015 of 1.015 to the 4t. This stuff cancels. See you later. What comes down is not just the T, but the 4T. All right. What I have left over here, this is clearly going to give me some crazy decimal. So I'm going to hold on just for a second before I go to the calculator. And I want to look and say, all right, I'm going to bring this guy down, this log of 1.015 of 1.6. Whoops. There we go. And then to get T by itself, I'm going to divide that by four. So I would do all that in one step on the calculator and change. So it says, in how many years to the nearest year will she reach her goal? All right. What that means, grandma's got to invest for about eight years to get the money that she needs for her favorite grandson. There you go. All right. The next question, um, it's saying we've got more money. Eric's depositing $3,000 into a new savings account. It pays 5.8% annual interest compounded continuously. Ding, ding, ding. That should tell you something right there. How long is it going to take for the savings to double? So again, we're looking for T, but the compound continuously, that means per formula right there. All right, 3,000, that's our p-value, 5.8%. That's our r-value. So if we plug 3,000 in, e is a value itself. Don't plug in for e. Raised to the 0 0.058. We don't know what t is, so keep t. And I want the money to double. That means my a-value is going to be double 3,000 or 6,000. All right. I would be thrilled if you paused me right now and tried this on your own. Okay. Divide by 3,000. Right here, there's the two. That two means that we're doubling. How cool is that? E to the 0 0.058 T. All right. I want to undo a base of E, which means I have to do log base E. But that has its own fancy name, and that is called natural log. So we're going to do the natural log of 2, and then do the natural log of e to the 0 0.058t. 
This piece of it cancels right out, and I get natural log of 2 on the left equals 0 0.058t on the right, and then divide both sides by that coefficient of 0 0.058. All right, here's where I'd pick up my calculator and say, all right, natural log, use the button of 2 divided by 0 0.058. And there's my answer right there, 11.95 and change. So how long will it take for the savings to double? Eh, it doesn't say we're around, but it's okay. It's our notes. So let's say about 12 years. The last thing, we've done regressions with a ton of the units we've done this year. There is something called a logarithmic regression. So it's just going to give the best fit logarithmic curve. But specifically, it's a natural log. So when you look on the calculator under stat calculate, you're going to see ln reg, which can be confusing because it almost looks like linear regression, but it's a natural log regression. To be able to do it, let's get ourselves set up. So you're definitely going to want to pause the video probably to get everything into your calculator. So we've got list one. List two, right? you're going to go to stat, edit, and then type all that stuff. Construct a scatter plot for the given data and then find the logarithmic regression. We haven't done a scatter plot in a while. To do that, I'm going to turn my stat plots on. So I'm going to go second, y equals, and then go to on. The other way to do it is just go to y equals and then arrow up and turn that on. But let me clear out this stuff I have in here. Mm -hmm. To be able to see this, you need to go to stats, or excuse me, zoom stat so that it picks a nice window for you. All right. So you have everything in there. Go to zoom nine, and then here we go. So take a minute and just sketch, kind of get this thing here, All right. which actually looks like an exponential function. But remember, logarithmic functions and exponential functions, they're inverses. So you can usually model what you can model with one, you can model with the other, all right? How we do this is the steps are right here on your calculator. Stat, calculate, logarithmic regression. Mm -hmm. So go to stat, over to calculate, and then down at the bottom, you can see it right there. Either hit number nine or arrow down and hit enter on nine. So it's a logarithmic regression. List one, list two. And ta -da. All right. So they tell you it's going to come out in the form of A plus B times the natural log of X. In this case, technically, you've got time and you've got the amount. So in this case, the X is the T and the Y would be the amount, the L. So if I'm playing along with the rules, this would be 14.740 if I go to the nearest thousandth. Oops, let me slide up a little here. And then plus negative 2.412 natural log of t. Now, if you use x and y, it's fine, all right? Honestly, mine's a little clunky. I probably wouldn't do plus a negative. I would just make that minus. So I can say 14.740 and then minus... 2.412 natural log of t. There we go. And now if I want to see it, you can watch if you'd like, or you can try it on your own calculator. I can do 14.740 and then minus 2.412 ln of x. Just hit graph. And then what we should see is if it's a decent curve, and it is, it's going to hit just about everything. So it's going to kind of come down looking just like that. Cool. All right. Let's finish it. Last parts. Um, use the equation. Predict how many ounces of liquid are remaining in the container after 48 hours. All right. 48 hours. That's a time value or an X value, if you will. All right. So the amount of liquid should be 14.740 minus 2.412 times the natural log of 48. Type that right in on your home screen, and you should come out with, to the nearest tenth, 5.4.
And in terms of a label, that's ounces. All right, it's one of my favorite questions. Is it interpolation or extrapolation? You should know this. Look at the chart, the T values go from two up to 30. And I'm asking you about 48. That is way outside the data set. <clears throat> so that means it's extrapolation and our reasoning. 48 is beyond the data set, right? Does that mean it's garbage? No, but it's not as reliable as any values that we'd ask about inside the data set. <clears throat> 